the 1992 Supreme Court case, R.A.V. versus St. Paul. R.A.V. versus St. Paul is about, it starts out with a minor, R.A.V. Rav, but R.A.V. because it's a minor, so you don't know the kid's name. He's just, you know, R.A.V., Robert Adam Vanderbilt. So R.A.V. is a kid who's going to take broken pieces of a chair, of a wooden chair, so there's a wooden chair, it's broken, he takes the broken pieces of the wooden chair, and he forms a cross, tapes it, and makes a cross out of it, and then he puts the cross up in the yard of the black family right across the street, and then he lights it on fire, and the Supreme Court is going to reverse his conviction. So, first let's talk about the First Amendment and what it means to me. Now, actually, just what it means to everybody, right? People say there's limits on free speech, but what is free speech? I'm allowed to cuss, right? Fuck, cunt, piss, shit, motherfucker, cocksucker, tits. I can say all those words, right? On TV, wherever I go. I can go to the courtroom and be like, hey, judge, why don't you lick my asshole, you know? Chew on these dingleberries, judge. Right? I'm allowed to do all these things. That's not contempt. Part of me wants to say yes to all those things, so... But specifically, there are some things that the Supreme Court, those things are not, so do not run out and, you know, tell a judge to eat your dingleberries. Come, <laughs> um, uh, just come back, uh, think about it for a second. So right now, the, what can we do? We can burn the American flag. So be, per the 1989 Texas v. Johnson, 1990 U.S. v. Eichmann, Supreme Court cases, we're allowed to burn the American flag as a political protest that is protected under the First Amendment. Gregory Lee Johnson did not like Ronald Reagan. He goes to the Dallas City Hall, lights an American flag. So we're allowed to, you know, light the American flag on fire, the Mexican flag, the Botswana flag. We could light flags on fire. We just burn a flag here, burn a flag there, burn a flag everywhere. So burning a flag is totally fine. You can ban... Outdoor fires, say, like if it's dry, the, I haven't celebrated the last two, three, four, Fourth of July because there's a Fourth of July fireworks ban on the Fourth of July in America of fireworks. So they could ban outdoor fires because it's a nuisance and it's a danger. But if I'm lighting an American flag in order to express myself, I'm lighting an American flag on fire. And so they could ban outdoor fires because it's dry, but they can't ban burning a flag because it's disrespectful to the country. That's against my First Amendment um, violation. So I believe if I'm burning a flag and it's not, you know, it's an outdoor fire, but I'm doing it for, to express myself, and I'm doing it in a safe manner, they can't do shit. I, that's freedom of speech, freedom of, you know, so it's kind of crazy. Say, like, hey, you got a fire over there? Oh, no, I'm just burning the American flag to let everybody know that uh, I really hate this president. Oh, okay, well then, you carry up. Make sure you don't barbecue or cook out or use fireworks, okay? You keep burning that flag, though, that's all right. So you can't ban, you know, political speech. Fuck the draft. I'm just letting you know. These are the things you're allowed to do. You're allowed to burn a flag. That's, you know, Texas v. Johnson. It's been settled since 1989 to 1990. This is 30-year-old law for uh, U.S. v. Eichmann, Texas v. Johnson. You could have a T-shirt. The guy actually in Cohen v. California in 1971 had a jacket that said, Fuck the draft. So that means you could have fuck anything printed on a t-shirt, right? You could say fuck the draft, fuck this, fuck that, fuck it all, right? Fuck uh, Jimmy Carter, you know, fuck whatever. So you can have a t-shirt that says fuck Trump, fuck impeachment, fuck the Democrats, fuck anything. You could just fuck, 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 just a, a t-shirt of nothing but fucks. So you get to wear whatever t-shirt, whatever print on, that you want on t-shirts, when it comes to words, at least, you can't be lascivious. That seems to be the dividing line with obscenity. When it comes to, so you can burn a flag, you can wear a shirt that says, fuck the draft. Public nudity 
Even though public nudity can be banned, nude dancing in a private establishment is protected by the First Amendment. That's Erie v. Paps AM, the 2000 case. So that means in a private establishment, if you want everybody, you know, to walk around naked, that's your private establishment. They cannot stop you from doing that. They could say no public nudity, but inside a private establishment, even though it's open to the public, it's a private establishment. So you can have, you know, you still have your First Amendment rights in a private establishment. Now, in a uh, concurrence, which was really a dissent to the 1969 Brandenburg decision, you're going to have Douglas who points out the role of symbolic speech. So if a man rips up a Bible to celebrate his abandonment of faith, or if he tears up a co copy of the Constitution because he hates the Supreme Court decision, or if he burns his draft card, all these things, the action was a vital way of conveying a certain message. It was symbolic speech, but it was necessary in order to bring the point home. I'm opposed to the war versus I just burnt my draft card. That's burning a draft card, tearing up the Constitution, ripping up the Bible. These are all symbolic speeches which are protected under the First Amendment. So the First Amendment, you're allowed to do all those things. So fuck the draft, right? Burn a flag. Go to a nudie bar. You're allowed to rip up a Bible, tear up the Constitution, and burn a draft card. All these things are totally fine. These are all protected speech. That's Douglas. This is a dissent with Justice Douglas and Hugo Black. And Douglas says, the seriousness of the threat should be measured by the actions taken to further the belief rather than the nature of the belief itself. So you're a communist, you're dangerous. You're a Ku Klux Klan person, you're dangerous. You're an anarchist, you're a socialist, you're dangerous, you're dangerous. Now you're allowed to be ideologically any of those things. And only if you say, you know, that you're a KKK member, and not only do you not like black folks and you want to see, you know, uh, violence happen to them, but you're prepared to do something that night. And you're going to set a cross on fire and put it on the black family's lawn. Now, this case, Virginia v. Black, is a Supreme Court case that says that the Virginia statute of banning cross burning is okay if it's done with the intent to intimidate, and also noting that such expression has a long and pernicious history as a signal of impending violence. First of all, it's trespassing. It's, you know, fire. And so I'll put a cross in your front lawn and set it on fire, trespassing, which means, you know, the person could shoot you. They see that it's a danger. You don't have a right to speak on someone else's lawn. The problem with this case is that St. Paul is going to use an ordinance to convict this um, kid when they didn't need that ordinance. They could just say, you know, you can't, it was a criminal act what they did without burning free speech. Okay, so the Virginia versus Black Supreme Court case, 2003, says it's fine. You can ban, you know, cross burnings. You can ban cross burnings. Because not only is there a history, but shit, it's outright criminal, right? It's trespassing, it's intimidating, it's lighting a fire. So that's possible arson, attempted arson. If there was just a gust of wind, right, now your house is on fire. So that's all. You cannot go into someone's yard and burn anything. It doesn't matter if it's an effigy. Hey, <laughs> hey there, uh, old, old Trevor. Old Trevor, I got an effigy here. Trevor, oh, look, Trevor. Just set this effigy on fire right here on your lawn. What you going to do? Oh, you're attacking me. They are, that, that makes sense. Okay, right. Of course. <laughs> so the 1992 SCOTUS case, RAV versus St. Paul, it starts out like this. And a lot of Supreme Court cases start out this way. And so at first you're like, what the fuck? They're saying you could go into another person's lawn and light a cross on fire? That's okay. That's not what 1992 SCOTUS case RAV versus St. Paul is saying. What it's saying is that you have a lot of freedom and 
that RAV versus St. Paul, there's a criminal law in St. Paul that forbid displaying symbols that arouse anger, alarm, resentment, and others on the basis of race, color, creed, religion, or gender, such as burning the cross. So, this is a law. This is a bias-motivated crime ordinance. You cannot display symbols which arouse, and that comes from Chaplinsky. If I have a Nazi symbol, if I have a, you know, Ku Klux Klan, if I go through Harlem just calling everybody the N-word, Chaplinsky says you have a right to attack that person. If somebody calls you a name, that's fighting words. If they call you a fascist, that's what the, the word in Chaplinsky was called. So that's a limit to our free speech. And that's the law of the land. I don't particularly agree with that one, but that's the law of the land. So somebody says in America, hey, you punk-ass bitch, you dumb punk-ass bitch, and then you just clock them. That's totally fine and dandy. So because of Chaplinsky, they're saying that if you have a burning cross, if you got a hood, if you got a Nazi swastika, these are symbols that arouse anger, alarm, resentment, and others on the basis of racism, color, creed, religion, gender, so no sexist, no religious, anti so a lot of shit there, right? But their reasoning was that Chaplinsky says, right, you call somebody a fascist, you can hit them, so therefore a person that's just calling everybody fascist all the time by the, that, that's, so anyways, um, they're going to say that St. Paul's blast motivated crime ordinance is not allowed, it's illegal, it breaks the First Amendment, you can't even have that ordinance, then Scalia is going to write for this opinion. So they reversed the conviction for, of the teenager, RAV, for burning a cross on a black family's lawn, at least one of the charges that went, you know, used the bias-motivated crime ordinance. They could just charge him with disturbing the peace. I think that would get him. They could, uh, you know, charge him with um, intimidation, attempted arson, uh, some kind of attempted terrorism, terroristic threatening. So there's a number of things that they could have charged RAV with. But instead, they said they charged him with a hate crime. And really, I mean, it kind of sucks. Like, I feel for the prosecutor, right? You, you got this perfect law that says you can't burn a cross on a lawn. Someone burns a cross on a lawn. You're like, oh, shit, I'm going to use this law. And then it goes all the way to the Supreme Court. They're like, oh, you can't use that law at all. And the bias-motivated crime ordinance is going to get knocked down because of the RAV v. St. Paul 1992 Supreme Court case. So, okay, they made that cross with the broken chair legs, went across the street, put the cross in the yard, set it on fire. The ordinance says whoever places on public or private property, a symbol, an object, an appellation, a characterization, graffiti, including but not limited to a burning cross, a Nazi swastika, which one knows and has reasonable grounds to know arouses anger, alarm, or resentment in others. Fighting words, Chaplinsky, on the basis of race, color, creed, religion, or gender, commits disorderly conduct and shall be guilty of a misdemeanor. Impermissibly content based is facially invalid under the First Amendment. That was they were contending that you cannot specifically say. That was an argument, but I don't think that they ruled on this. Okay, so to begin with, let there be no mistake that I believe that burning a cross on someone's front yard is reprehensible, but St. Paul has sufficient means at its disposal to prevent such behavior without adding the First Amendment to the fire. So that's actually brilliant. That's Scalia. And it's not reprehensible. It's criminal. It's criminal to set a cross on fire in another person's yard. But he's saying St. Paul has, you know, other means, right? Terroristic threatening, attempted arson, uh, trespassing. They could have, you know, just charged him with trespassing instead of saying, you, you know, that kind of speech. We're, we don't allow that kind of speech around here. And, uh, yeah, so Scalia is going to carry on with his craziness. <laughs> he says, thus while... Burning a flag in violation of an ordinance against outdoor fires could be punishable. Burning a flag in violation of an ordinance against dishonoring the flag is not. So that's just absolutely brilliant. That's absolutely brilliant. So apparently we're allowed to criminalize burning crosses. Not apparently. <laughs> 
We can criminalize burning crosses on other people's yards without using illegal ordinances like St. Paul's bias motivated criminal statute. If you got a law, no outdoor fires, right? They do that on 4th of July. That's constitutional. You can say no outdoor fires. But what you can't say is you cannot burn an American flag for outdoor fires because that's dishonoring the flag. So this has nothing to do with the actions, the criminal actions of RAV, and it has everything to do with St. Paul's essentially hate crime ordinance in the way that it was written. So they're saying the hate crime ordinance is just unnecessary. You added all this extra shit. You know, the crime is the crime, but then you try to make it and say it was something else. Again, you're going to have a case that actually contradicts it, right? That Virginia case, the Virginia v. Black. So Virginia v. Black, 2003, says it's okay to have a Virginia law that says you cannot burn crosses. There's a history of that, and you can specifically say that, because especially if it's done with the intent to intimidate. You're burning a cross on your own property, nobody's around, that's fine. But if you burn a cross on the person's yard, there's definitely an intent to t intimidate, and then there's a possibility of crime, you know, uh, impending violence coming right around. So that is not protected speech. Imminent lawless action. Anything that, you know, where there's imminent lawless action about to take place. Somebody just broke, you know, uh, trespassed and lit a cross on fire on your lawn. That's impending violence. That's imminent lawless action that's about to happen to you and your family and you. That's specific. That's right to the person, to that person in that house. That's a threat. You're not, that's not protected speech. So Virginia v. Black comes out specifically just to make sure that everybody, just to make sure we're all on the same page. The RAV case does not allow you to go light a cross on your neighbor's lawn. What it stops the prosecutor of that town from doing this, prosecuting under some sort of hate crime, in addition to the trespassing, terroristic threatening, attempted arson, and all these other charges. And specifically the way that they wrote it up. So it's the anti biasness of their. So, <clears throat> so we're allowed to say, fuck the draft. We're allowed to burn a flag. Right? We're allowed to burn a draft card. We're allowed to engage in some action which expresses our feelings and our thoughts and our speech and it's protected under the First Amendment. The seriousness of the threat should be measured by the actions taken to further the belief rather than the nature of the belief itself. That's what Douglas had said. Now, a state may choose... <laughs> A state may choose to prohibit. This is Scalia. I'm quoting him. A state may choose to prohibit only that obscenity, which is the most patently offensive in its uh, uh, prurience. Prurience, that which involves the most lascivious displays of sexual activity. That's what uh, prurient is, having an excessive interest in sexual matters. So what is up with your prurience? Your prurience is going over the top. But specifically, he's saying it's okay for a state to call something obscene when it's lascivious. The lascivious is obscene. But you cannot prohibit only that obscenity which includes offensive political messages. So racist messages, messages which are offensive to the government and this and that person, you cannot prohibit political messages. So it's obscene because it's lascivious. The display of sexual activity is just too lascivious for the general public to handle. So you can ban something for that, but you can't ban it because it's, you know, it was created by a Democrat or a progressive or a Green. A socialist had commissioned that statue of David, and that's why we got to get that statue of David out of here. You cannot do that. You cannot ban offensive political messages. So I think lascivious is the best word here, prurient. Uh, why, why would anybody use prurient? You know, it wouldn't be prurient at this juncture. That shit's lascivious. And lascivious, ugh. It just sounds like a disgusting word. Lascivious sounds lascivious. I'm not even for sure if I'm allowed to hear the word lascivious. Because lascivious is lascivious. Scalia goes on. St. Paul has no such authority to license one side of a debate to fight freestyle while requir requiring the other to follow the marquee 
the Marquess of Queensberry rules. Okay, so he got all. <laughs> How come the racist have to tie, you know, fight with one arm tied behind their back, and you know, meanwhile they get to fight freestyle? The Marquess of Queensberry, Marquess of Queensberry. I think it's block boxing. So something about that's fair boxing rules. You can't just, you know, just street fight. You got to have some kind of. They both agree to the rules. Marquess of Queensberry rules is yeah, you. You want to fight? Okay, let's fight to the Marquess of Queensberry rules. So Scalia seems to be saying here that racists need a chance too. You know, <laughs> it's crazy how the Supreme Court. Well, you know, in the early history, throw communists and socialists and anarchists and Black Panther, you know, party members into jail because of this and that and what the fuck ever. But then as soon as the Ku Klux Klan starts being racist, then all of a sudden the Supreme Court's like, wait a second, we need to rethink what we're doing here. Oh, okay, so you guys are racist, capitalist, imperialist, so just couch our arguments in that language, and then you'll see what we mean when, hey, we're a socialist, and by, <laughs> that doesn't mean we should go to jail. Oh, you're a socialist? You should go to jail. Hey, you're a communist? Well, you should be in jail. Well, I read about communism, and, you know, communism is, they go around raping everybody. That's not true. That's not what communism is. It doesn't matter. We're going to use our misinterpretation to define who you are, and now we're throwing you in jail. They did this shit. That, they did that shit in America, 1950s. In the early 1900s, they did it over and over and over again. It wasn't until Brandenburg decision in 1969 that they started taking opinion about First Amendment. Okay, okay, maybe we should protect the First Amendment here. So the reason why I'm talking about the RAV case is because of that whole other case where they had the uh, KKK party. And then there was a threat. Brandenburg, right? That's, that's 1969 Brandenburg. So Brandenburg is good free speech case law. Shink and all those other ones are just terrible. It's, you shouldn't even consider them. So really, you know, in order to understand free speech in America, someone needs to tell you about the Brandenburg case, 1969 Brandenburg. This is what we have a right to say. This is what the right. So this is, um, you're not allowed to threaten people, okay? So this is Scalia, the last quote I got for Scalia. The federal government can criminalize only those threats of violence that are directed against the president since the reasons why threats of violence are outside the First Amendment, protecting individuals from the fear of violence, from the disruption that fear engenders, and the possibility that the threatened violence will occur. We have special force when applied to the person of the president. So he's saying in this sentence that you can't threaten people. That's against, that's outside the bounds of free speech. You threaten somebody that you could, you know, follow up on the threat, you said you wanted something to happen that's specific to that person. There's a, a path work. I don't like you. I don't like your face. I'm going to come back here tomorrow at 3 o'clock and I'm going to beat the shit out of you. You're not allowed to say that. The First Amendment does not protect threats. Now, he's saying that the president has a special, you know, place in America. And I'm not for sure if he's saying that he's so special that, therefore, you know, you're, you can't, um, it's worse with him to threaten violence on him or that it's okay to threaten violence on him because he's more of a symbolic kind of person, but it's not like the actual person. It's kind of like the KKK threatening black people and Jews. The threat is there. It's something that they believe in, but the individual person that's a Ku Klux Klan member, you know, uh, may and probably haven't, you know, haven't used violence. So they can hold, you know, these uh, terrible ideas in their, their head. They can have these awful thoughts and awful beliefs, and they can share these awful thoughts and awful beliefs. But unless there's imminent lawless action about to happen, then that's not, you cannot, um, that's protected free speech. It's protected under the First Amendment. So, yeah, I'll say it one last time. Federal government can criminalize only those threats of violence that are directed against the president, since the reasons why threats of violence are outside the First Amendment, protecting individuals from the fear of violence, from the disruption that fear engenders, and from the possibility that the threatened violence will occur, have special force when applied to the person of the president. So, there it is. That's RAV versus St. Paul. And apparently you're allowed to go in other people's yards and light across them.
apparently you're allowed to go around being a terrorist. Let, you're allowed to terrorize the shit. Yeah, it's terroristic threatening. It's, um, you know, I would say attempted arson because a gust of wind, you're lighting fire. It's clear. It's a threat, terroristic threatening, attempted arson, trespassing. And, you know, you can call the cops and get those, all those charged on them. You can also just go out there and attack the person. They're up on your lawn to uh, stand your ground. Right, you, you're on my you're on my land, and I think that you know not only are you lighting a cross on fire, but I think that you might do something else. So therefore, I can defend myself. So I could use force, right? I can attack you and make a citizen's arrest, or just keep punching you until you get tired of being punched, and then you know get off my lawn. So, yeah, 1992 R A V V St. Paul. Peace.